always, please pause the video and try the question on your own before listening on. In part A, our task is to draw a free body diagram of the suitcase, so let's go ahead and do that. Now the black dot in the center of the diagram represents the suitcase. Perhaps the most obvious force acting on the suitcase is the gravitational force, which acts downward. We can label that force mg. We have the woman pulling with a strap or a rope of some kind, and she's pulling to the top right in that direction there. We can label that T for tension. Usually T is a letter that we use to represent a force that's acting in a string or a rope or some kind of strap like this in the picture. We have the ground pushing up on the suitcase, and that's typically called normal force, so we can use the letter N to represent that. And then the question mentions that there is a frictional force, and since we can assume that she's moving to the right, the frictional force will be pointing to the left. It's trying to oppose the motion of the suitcase. And so since there's motion going on here, we can call that F sub K for a kinetic frictional force. That's a pretty sufficient free body diagram. If we wish, we can fill in some of the numerical values. For example, the friction force was stated as being 20 newtons. So if we wish, we can actually set this equal to 20 newtons. Just made it there. Mg, we can fill in the mass and the gravitational constant. Now the mass was stated as 20 kilograms and the gravitational constant is 9.8, of course. So that turns out to be 196 newtons. And then the question mentioned she's pulling on the strap with a 35 newton force, so we can actually label that 35 newtons. The normal force is unknown at this point, so we'll just have to leave that as n. And that would complete part A of this question. To complete part B, we have to notice that the question mentioned that she's pulling the suitcase at a constant speed. Now, a constant speed means that the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared. But perhaps more importantly, it also means that the sum of the forces in the x direction will equal zero, as will the sum of the forces in the y direction equal zero. So it's these two ideas that we're going to pursue for parts b and c. And perhaps we can begin with the sum of the forces in the x direction. Now, before actually plugging in forces into the sum of the forces equation, what we want to do is break some of the forces into their components. This is extremely important. Now, three of the forces are pointing perfectly along the axes. So, for example, the normal force points exactly along the y-axis. The gravitational force also points exactly along the y-axis. Fric the frictional force points along the x-axis. But it's the tension force that will notice is acting at a particular angle. In fact, we're trying to find that angle in part B of the question. So whenever a force is acting at an angle relative to the x or y axis, what we need to do is break it into its components. Now, there will be two components for tension. Let's take a look at them. We're going to have the x component and the y component. Now, using trigonometry, we can note that the x component is going to be 35 times the cosine of the angle theta, and then the y component is going to be 35 times the sine of that angle. If you have any questions about where those are coming from, please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to clarify. Now, here's a key that we can use to solve the rest of the question. Once we break the force into its components, it's a good idea to erase the original force, because as you'll see, it will kind of get in our way. So I'm going to take out the original tension force because we've broken it already into its x and y components. Okay, so we'll notice that all of the forces are now acting either perfectly leftward or rightward or perfectly upward or downward. Once we do that, we can proceed into the formula. So the sum of the forces in the x direction, notice that there are two forces acting in the x direction. We have 35 cosine of theta, and then we have this kinetic frictional force. Because the kinetic frictional force is pointing to the left, we gotta make sure that we use a negative sign when we plug it into the equation. So the two forces in the x direction will be 35 cosine of theta, and then minus the 20 newtons. And as we noted, that's equal to zero. Well, we can add 20 over to the other side to give us 35 cosine of theta equals 20. We'll divide both sides by 35. And actually, we can solve for theta right here because we can just take the inverse cosine of the right side. So we set up the inverse cosine of 20 over 35. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get approximately 55.2 degrees. So that'll be the angle that the strap makes with the horizontal, so part B is solved. We can now move on to part C, which is asking for the magnitude of the normal force. Well, to calculate the normal force, we can turn to the sum of the forces in the y direction. We will note that there are several forces acting in the y direction. We have the upward 35 sine of theta and also the upward normal force, so both of those will be positive since they're pointing up. And then we have the downward gravitational force, so that'll end up being negative when we plug it in. So let's plug those three y direction forces into the equation.
Now this equation contains theta. We already found theta to be 55.2 degrees, so we can substitute that in. We can add the 196 over to the other side and then subtract 35 sine of 55.2 from both sides of the equation. That will cancel them on the left side and so we're going to have the normal force equaling approximately 167 newtons. So thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so that you can receive updates on future videos. And also you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.